Are you wondering if you should get a tech degree to get a tech job? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with a little over 25 years experience. And in today's video, we're going to talk about are tech degrees worth it, especially if you want a tech job. And uh, when we talk about tech degrees, we're talking about degrees like computer science, computer engineering, software engineering, those types of jobs. And do these degrees make sense in 2025 and beyond? Now, before I get into this, I'm going to let you know that I love higher education. I personally hold two master's degrees and they have helped me dramatically in my career, but they are not tech degrees. One is a master's in business administration and one came from my nurse practitioner career when I was practicing internal medicine uh, 25 years ago. Now, I will tell you, my MBA helped me dramatically because it gave me the business skills to move into roles like enterprise architecture. But uh, are tech degrees worth it? So let's talk about the tech degrees and what's actually taught in tech programs. So most of what's taught in a graduate of a computer science or a software development career is very basic things. In fact, they are so basic that in most cases, they're not enough for any of the technology jobs that exist today. They are enough for the junior level jobs that existed years ago, where we hired freshers straight out of the school and they did little entry level things like racking servers in a rack and installing an operating system, that kind of thing. Well, all those jobs ended many years ago. In fact, you can see some YouTube videos where I was guiding freshers into taking different kinds of jobs. Why did these jobs end? Because one DevOps engineer in a cloud computing environment can replace 50 of those junior level people. And the reality is AI can even replace some of those automation engineers. Now there are jobs that AI can't replace like sales executives, solutions architects, cloud architects that have a different set of skills. But if you really think about it, the challenge becomes is what you're getting in an IT degree is not enough for any of the ma major tech jobs that exist today. And when it comes to getting a tech job, you don't have to start at the bottom. For example, my first role was a senior engineer and I was a principal architect in two years. You can see many examples of people on our channel whose first job was a solutions architect, cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect. And the point is, is all it takes is the right set of skills because there's such a critical shortage of skills. So let's talk about the skills that are going to matter and what you need to do and why you're going to get need some required training that's going to be outside your degree. So I will tell you in my youth, 25 years ago, I was a nurse practitioner practicing internal medicine and I wanted to move into networking and I wanted to do it fast and I wanted to be great at it. So what I did is I went to two to three boot, actually it was three boot camps. And then after that, I studied for nine months. I passed the CCI and moved into my first, my first job. It was a senior engineering role. And within two years, I was a principal architect. Now that gave me the skills to succeed. But if you have a tech degree, you're still going to need the same level of training that I had to get because all of the things you're going to be taught in the most part are irrelevant in the world of AI. But there's still a significant value in having a college degree, especially college degrees that teach the skills of the future. And when you combine the right degree, which is part of your branding, the right certifications, which is branding, and then the right skills, Wow, you have the perfect recipe for success. So I want you to know what the real skills are. I'm going to tell you what the highly paid tech skills are versus the lowly paid tech skills. And then after that, I'm going to tell you the tech skills of the future and why you're probably better off with a business degree than a tech degree in your technology career. So the highest paying tech jobs out there are not related to your hands-on skills. They're related to your strategy and your ability to solve real world problems. I'm gonna say it again, your hands-on skills are the lowest paid skills you have. That's typically why a gardener who's using their hands typically earns far less than a physician that's mostly using their mind, unless they're a surgeon where they're using their minds and their hands. Now the same thing applies in tech. The people that are doing the work 
get paid far less than the strategists, like the architects that are creating the strategy. And we're talking much, much less. The uh, chief information officers are strategists, and they're earning far more than the people that are doing their jobs. The directors and senior directors are strategists that are earning far more than the people that are doing the hands-on work. So the highest paying tech roles are not about knowing how to, they're about solving problems. And to solve real world problems, you need to know business and technology. And when you know business and technology and you know how, and you know how to marry them together, now you're moving into architecture roles. And in architectural roles, for example, you might be helping a hospital uh, make less errors to make sure more patients survive their stay at the hospital. You might be helping a business gain competitive advantage by leveraging, say, AI. So reality is what you need to do is combine business and technical. So now imagine you have a business degree and the, you already have the business skills and now you learn the technical skills. Now you're moving into architecture roles and architecture roles pay $200,000 to $800,000 plus per year as opposed to the hands-on roles that pay far less. Now, here's the other reason I recommend business degrees. 90% of what's taught in a tech degree in today's point is irrelevant by AI, but look at the skills of the future. So the World Economic Forum listed the top 10 skills for 2030 and beyond. And you'll get so many of these in business school and you'll be applying using these in an architecture role. Analytical thinking, the ability to uh, evaluate information logically and make data-driven decisions. Well, you get a degree in business and you're gonna be doing that all day long. So it's lots of practice with the real world skills of the future. Creative thinking, one of the 10 skills of the future. In business school, I promise you, they will give you case studies with various business problems and you will have to get creative to solve those problems. So it'll teach you that creative problem solving. Now, the next set of skills for the future is resilience, flexibility, and agility. A business degree will help you with that, and here's the reason. It will teach you how to learn, and it will teach you how to find quality information. And you will know what kind of places to get what kind of information, how to source that information, and how to present that information intelligently. And that's the skills of career agility, where you're in one job and you can do another one fairly quickly. Now, motivation and self-awareness. Truthfully, you get this from any degree. Getting a degree is just no fun. It's a grueling process, so it proves some degree of motiv motivation. Now, curiosity and lifelong learning, any degree honestly would help you here because it'll teach you how to learn and how to learn from the right information. So any degree would help you, including the computer degrees, but so would a business degree. Technological literacy. Now, that is something you need to know. It's probably not going to be covered extensively in any tech degree, but that's where your tech training comes. But it's not how to build the tech. It's understanding how to apply technology to solve real world problems, whether that be AI, cloud computing, what have you. Now, attention to detail and dependability is one of the top 10 skills of the future. And I promise you, if you're in business school and you're making your business school uh, uh, documents and you don't have an attention to detail, someone will find it and they will penalize you for it. So you will get a good, keen attention to detail. Now, the next set of skills for the future is empathy and active listening, the ability to build relationships, understand others' perspective, and communicate effectively. I promise you they're going to help uh, force you to give lots of presentations and things in business school and help you better communicate. Now, the next one is leadership and social influence. Well, in business school, there's all about how to become a manager, so they're going to give you some leadership skills. It won't be enough, but it'll be a really good start. And typically some kind of quality control, safety awareness is typically needed in today's world. And I can tell you in business school, that's where I learned about Six Sigma and other quality control procedures. So reality is to build a great career, you need a combination of business skills, soft skills, and tech skills, because these are all the skills of the future. And that's the magic recipe for success. So think about maybe getting a business degree and learning the tech on the side and having that perfect combination. If you'd like to become a cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect, we have training programs that teach all the business skills, all the leadership skills, all the technical skills, all in one. And uh, we have them in cloud, enterprise, security, and AI architect roles. 
We also hold uh, a we weekly webinar, sometimes twice per week, where we go over various architectural roles, talk about what we do in the job, talk about all the skills you need to actually be able to get hired and, and the steps to getting hired. These webinars are completely free. They're live on Zoom. We can have a face-to-face -face conversation. You can ask me questions and I'll give you any guidance I can to assist you in your technology career. And it's all free. You can sign up for one of these free webinars. The link is in the description of this video. And while you're in the description of this video, please check out some of the free guides. You can sign up and they'll be emailed to you. Guides on how to win, say, the interview. Guides on how to get a job as a cloud architect, solutions architect, enterprise architect, AI architect, and many other free things for you. And they're all in the description of this video. And they're all free. Now, if you enjoyed this video and should you get an IT degree, uh, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video real soon. Take care.